As you're writing the book, uh, was there any uh, one uh, subject in terms of your various chapters that uh, resonated the most with you, that got your blood going faster than any other? I find that the, the, the allegation that uh, Hitler was a Christian. Yeah, you, whole, you have a whole chapter on that. Yeah, I find that it, so obnoxious because the, the, this, this tangible evil of Nazism. You know, the, the, the Nazis tried to replace uh, Messiah with Fuhrer, uh, church with party, um, soul with will, uh, care for the weakest with survival of the fittest. Everything they believed in was anathema to Christianity. And then someone would say, well, German soldiers had God is with us on their belt buckles. Yeah, that was 1890. That belt was designed by the Prussians. The Nazis tried to get rid of it. The German army said, no, we, we want it to stay. Then what's that got to do with anything? If you read Hitler's personal conversations, he hated Christianity. Yeah. And the number of Christians who were slaughtered, after Jewish people, active Christians, evangelical and Catholic, were the largest number of people. They didn't have to die. They volunteered, I will not give in to evil. And they were murdered because of it. And people still dare to say that somehow Hitler uh, was a Christian. Of course he wasn't. He was baptized a Catholic. He made a couple of speeches trying to recruit alleged Christians. But he hated Christianity and everything it stood for. He was a pagan. And the Nazi ideologues wanted to reintroduce paganism. And some of the, the gods now current in the New Age movement, they supported. And uh, I have to say this as well, within the SS, uh, I'm afraid that there was a cult of homosexuality too. So some of the groups that are attacking us today need to look at their history and actually ask themselves some questions. Yeah. Uh, when I read um, uh, Bonhoeffer mm. by Eric Metaxas. Um, wonderful writer. Wonderful writer. He's been here on the show about four or five times, ter terrific guy. But uh, I didn't realize until reading that, that uh, biography of, of Bonhoeffer that Hitler actually tried to create a, a, a new religion. National church. National church yeah. with replacing the Bible with Mein Kampf and, and, and really he, he would become the messianic figure, the one mm. that people essentially were worshiping almost. Well, the, the Hitler youth, I mean, they, they sang songs which actually refer to the, the killing of clergy. Yeah. Uh, they, they were vehemently anti-Christian and there were two stages. There was an attempt to, to, to create a Christian church that said that Jesus was not a Jew and that Jesus was an Aryan and the people around him were the Jews and they killed him and it was a perversion of Lutheranism. It didn't last. People like uh, Bonhoeffer and Neimuller of course opposed that. Um, and then he tried to set up a, a, a pagan institution but that didn't catch on either because even though the German people were going through this hell they resisted the, this notion of paganism, but he tried to introduce pagan festivals, a pagan calendar. This is not particularly deep research, it's very well known. Uh, but again, there's this idea that because people were born in Europe into a nominally Christian atmosphere, it does not mean they were practicing followers of Jesus Christ. Um, and we have to understand this. The 20th century, the, the, the great evil leaders were atheists, Stalin, uh, Pol Pot, Mao, Hitler. The century of, of atheism was the century of slaughter, but we'll still be told more wars in the name of religion than anything else. Not true, not true at all. People will use anything to, to fight. It doesn't mean that they're doing it uh, for Jesus Christ. People commit crimes in spite of their Christianity. I would argue people commit crimes because of their religion, and I can think of one religion right now. Mm. Um, Christians, see, every time, and I don't want to be too political, but every time a, a Muslim group a fundamentalist group murders someone in the, they say, in the name of Muhammad while quoting the Quran. The media will say, oh no, that we, I, uh, no, not true at all. When some mass murderer in Norway uh, murders innocent children, when he says in, in, in his manifesto, haven't been to church in 17 years, have no relationship with Christ, I'm a Freemason, I'm pro-abortion, I'm pro-gay marriage, still the media say he's a fundamentalist Christian. So it's not a level playing field. We're not being treated fairly. It's time that we began to, in, in a very peaceful way, in a loving way, but respond. And if you like, fight back. Two minutes, Michael. Why the antipathy to Christian faith? Why? Oh, um, truth is always threatening. We are a mirror held up to reflect society. And although it claims to be happy, it ain't happy at all. It doesn't like its reflection. Uh, the number of, of, of antidepressants used today, uh, unhappiness, uh, aborted babies, uh, failed marriages, uh, people who don't like the work they do, people who are unhappy at home, suicide attempts, it's going up and up, not down and down. I love modern technology, you know, I, I love the laptop and the big TV, I'm not, I'm not being puritanical about this, but people are not happy, there is that God-shaped vacuum within them, and so when they see people who found the, 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 the joy and truth of Christianity, sometimes they say, I would like that, but often, you know this, they say, I hate you for it, and I'll attack everything you stand for, and we say no. 
we say no to certain things. You can't do what you want to do whenever you want to do it. And being told no in contemporary North America in particular is probably the worst sin you can commit. If Jesus were to appear physically you know, in, in, in front of these people, would they have the same antipathy or would they be, would they be cowed? It's a very good question because some of them, I, they would still say no. You, you could bring him on and they'd still say, nope, nope, nope. But I think many others, some might say, I need to feel the wounds yeah. and then say, my Lord, my God but many others would, would realize. I think a lot of people are open to this. Uh, they just need to be helped. And we help in different ways. I mean, you help here so much every day. Uh, I'm not as nice as you guys, so I'm a bit more aggressive, but what I've tried to do in the book is to just intellectualize the instinctive, give them a few more weapons so they can say, hey, that is not true, you know. I'm sorry, you can't say that it isn't true. And then you'll see how these people react because they're, they're, they're seldom challenged. Yeah. The book is called Heresy. Lies they spread about Christianity. Michael Korn is the author, and it is available on our eStore, friends. You can uh, log on to crosswords.ca, or you can call us at 1 800 265 3100 and order your copy of Michael Korn's latest book. It certainly is worth the read. I testify to it. I loved it. It's great having you here, Michael. It's a pleasure to be back. We'll be back with more right after this, friends. <laughs>